Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be discussing about basics of embedded programming for STM32 or this can be even applied to embedded programming of any device uh, that may be 8051 or any PIC controllers or any LPC controllers or any of the microcontroller devices or any microprocessor devices. So to get started, we will be starting with the constraints of a, any embedded device. Any embedded device has three major constraints, which is the first one is the first one is ROM, the second one is RAM, and the third one is power. So coming to ROM, what is ROM is ROM stands for read-only memory. This is the place where you will be storing your embedded application. So you will be storing your embedded application here. And what happens is for embedded devices, this ROM is very less. This is in the order of megabytes, uh, like 512 megabytes, not even 512, it will be like 4 megabytes, 6 megabytes, 8 megabytes, depending on the microcontroller, this varies. And uh, in order to optimize ROM, we have we can do two things, that is, we have to make our code as small as possible. By this, I don't mean that you have to include libraries and uh, or you have to make more function calls. No, I don't mean that. I mean that uh, you have to skip redundant lines. For example, if you have something like C is assigned with A and uh, also uh, B is assigned with C, you can simply write uh, C is assigned with A is assigned with uh, B. So this, this also does the same as this. So uh, like this, you can skip the redundant lines or for that matter, you can even uh, optimize the code by choosing a better algorithm or by choosing a uh, way that is more that has less complexity like O of n or O of 1 so this also will reduce the ROM consumption and coming to recursive inline functions if you are using recursive inline functions what happens is inline functions itself the meaning of inline function is instead of a function call this will replace the entire area of the function call with the function implementation itself. So if you are using recursive inline, this will continuously uh, replace the function call with the function definition. So this will increase the length of the code, which will which will lead to ROM exploitation. And the second thing is RAM. RAM stands for random access memory. So this is the place where so RAM has two two things. The first thing is you will have the address for your variables that is the memory space for your variables is provided in RAM and the second thing is uh, stack. Stack is also given here in the RAM only. So variables will be given in the heap. This is known as heap and in stack we will be having uh, we can handle function calls or uh, interrupts. So the, these kind of things we can handle in stack. So in RAM, what happens is if you are not taking proper measures of uh, utilizing RAM properly, there is a high chances that your application might crash because your application will be running based on the RAM only. So if you are not taking proper measures, application will surely crash. So we have to make sure that we are selecting the right data type for the application based on the target microcontroller for example if your mcu is of 16 bit uh, it is better to choose the data types less than 16 bits uh, if it is necessary and if it is uh, unavoidable it's okay if you go for higher bits also but why i am saying less than 16 bit is if your mcu is of 16 bit that means that your address bus address bus and data bus inside the MCU has only 16 lines. So if you are using a data type that uses 32 bit, uh, in, it is like unnecessarily you are wasting the clock cycles of your MCU. This will take two clock cycles in fetching the data. So if you are using 16 bit, this will take only one clock cycle. So that is one thing you can do. And the second thing is avoid function calls if possible. So if function, write functions only if you are uh, using the same same kind of implementation of the code multiple times you don't randomly write functions wherein which you are using you are calling the function only once because that will unnecessarily waste the ram also and the third and major thing which everyone should take care is uh, 
make sure binary operations are done between identical data types to avoid coercion what is coercion coercion is a process or a phenomena in which the lower data type is converted into higher data type while performing a binary operation puzzle right so let me explain so what is coercion is basically for example if you are uh, yet to perform a addition operation between two variables that is let us say if you are performing addition between uh, short int a long b and uh, normal int c so if i am writing something like c is assigned with a plus b and here i am giving a is equals to 3 b is equals to 2 and c let us keep it like that so if even though the answer is uh, like don't care about the numbers what happens is this is a binary operator plus is a binary operator so when binary operator is induced what it will do is it will check for the both data types of both the operands here b is of long and a is of short so it will simply upgrade the class of a from short to long and after that it will perform the addition operation now the result also even though the result is 5 the data type is long because both are of long so the result will be long now is equals to is also a binary operation c is in the int data type of c but the answer is in long now this int will be upgraded to long this process is known as coercion so wh while doing this what happens is unnecessarily you are consuming additional memory even though you are not intended to do it so it is better to perform binary operations between two data types of same kind this will avoid coercion so this is the good point or uh, like this is the major point that everyone should focus while performing while uh, developing their embedded applications and the third major concern is power obviously because all the embedded applications are battery powered like if you consider like weather station or weather logging station or any any embedded application like if you consider your mobile phone itself it is also battery powered so when there are any devices which are battery powered it is uh, it is our it is a designer duty to optimize the power consumption so in order to optimize power consumption uh, we can do two things one thing is optimizing the code itself that we are doing in conserving rom and ram and the second thing is using power modes of your mcu for example if you uh, take your embedded microcontroller let's say you are using uh, stm32 or for that matter any cortex m4 powered microcontrollers it has something known as thumb mode in thumb mode the microcontroller will be switching from the high speed clock for example for stm32 uh, f401 ret microcontroller the clock speed is 84 megahertz but when it is in thumb mode its clock speed will be equal to the real time clock which is 32.768 kilohertz ignore the decimals it might be wrong so what happens is if you are switching down the clock frequency obviously you are reducing the power uh, this can be implemented like for example uh, uh, in an example scenario like uh, you are having a weather station wherein you are sending the data to the central gateway for every 10 minutes so it is not required for the mcu to be on every time it is okay like if you if you can configure a timer or something which can wake up every 10 minutes and send data so for that you can configure your mcu to go to sleep or to go to thumb mode for 9 minutes so that you are saving the uh, power so this type of optimizations can be done in order to reduce the power consumption of your embedded device and coming to the next part uh, in the before i have said that make sure you select the right data type for your application now we'll focus on what are the different data types available how to choose them like how do we consider different data types and what are the differences between them so basically there are two things iso c89 and the second thing is iso c99 standard most of them are aware of iso c89 standard data types which are care unsigned care short int unsigned short int int unsigned int long 
unsigned long, long long and unsigned long. These are the sizes uh, of different data types, but these are hardware specific or for that matter, these are hardware specific. And it might vary from CPU to CPU or platform to platform or target to target. For example, car may, uh, int may be four bytes in my computer and in some other computer, it might be two bytes or in some other computer, it might be six bytes. Th this is completely dependent. So you can't predict key. This will be only four bytes or this will be only six bytes. So if anybody are willing to see their, see the ranges of different data types or sizes, you can pause here and view the ranges. And moving forward, we have something known as ISO C99. This is the standard which most of you are not aware of, but this is the standard which industry experts or industry level embedded programmers use. This is the uh, standard which we all must also focus. The reason why is, uh, if you observe in the previous scenario, what I have mentioned is size is not fixed. For example, if I am writing a, a program, in my ex, uh, windows let's say if i am writing a program in windows 10 and uh, i am sending my program to my friend whose whose windows is windows 11 windows 11 so for me uh, this program might be uh, what are the variables i have used like int or short int for me let us say this int is of 2 bytes and short int is of 1 byte but my friend is using 11, 11 windows 11 so for him it might be like int is of 4 bytes and short int is of let's say 2 bytes so suddenly if you observe your program memory utilization has changed before in my application it is simply like 2 bytes plus 1 byte just 3 bytes i am using but suddenly now it has changed to 6 bytes so the significant memory change might affect my end product that is the end embedded microcontroller when the hex file is dumped so in order to avoid all these and make a make my code cross platform compatible like it is compatible to any platform what embedded programmers does is they simply go for fixing the memory here if you see int 8 underscore t so this will by default allocate only 8 bits of memory irrespective of any platform or any hardware or any target in the same way this is unsigned int 8 bits int 16 bits unsigned int 16 bits int 32 unsigned int 32 int 64 unsigned int 64 so if you are willing to work between any data of this range mentioned here uh, in this you can see so based on the range you are working you can choose the data type so that you can optimize the memory performance of your microcontroller unit so next time when you are programming please make sure that you are using a right data type from the iso c99 standard majorly for embedded applications this will optimize the memory and at the same time save the power of the microcontroller thank you for watching the video please do subscribe to my channel and share this to your friends if you like my video thank you